the world. Lisa Frederick, senior friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to start access and study relationships through the eyes of some of the access templates. And as I've said before, the templates are not necessarily something that you would use for production purposes, but they do provide a lot of ideas and hints that might help you learn. This time we're going to hit the nutrition tracking template, enable content, and explore the database that's created by the nutrition template. One of the first things I like to do when I start a new template is just look in the tables to see what kinds of data it is storing. In activity levels, we have five records with uh, different types of activities. When I see the expand buttons to the left of the record, I know this table is on a one side of a one-to-many relationship. And if I open these records, I do not see any related records attached to the one side of the relationship. We'll explore that more later. How about exercise log? There are no records. Food log, no records. Foods, wow, here we have 6,338 records with all kinds of different foods. And as I tab across the fields, I see all kinds of information about food, such as calories, fat and grams, protein and grams, carbs and grams, fiber, calcium, iron, magnesium, sodium. So lots of information about the nutritional content and vitamins and minerals in foods. That's pretty interesting. In the My Profile table, there are no records. And in the Recipe Temp table, there are no records. In the Tips table, there are 153 records. It's like tips about staying healthy. And then there's different tip categories, vegetables, fruit, milk, and so on. In the Weight Log table, there's no records. So I have a feel for what's in this database from just a data standpoint. I'm closing all the tables now, and also this opening form today at a glance. And I'm going to go into database tools, relationships, and look at the relationships. First thing I see is these MSYS tables, which are system tables that are created and stored and managed by Access. I never need to change those. So I'm going to delete these from my relationship screen just to clean it up, because I really do not want to be messing with the relationships of the system tables. Let's look at this relationship here, my profile and activity levels. I can tell that they're related in some sort of relationship, and I can tell that it's a one-to-many relationship because on the one side, we're connected to the primary key field in the activity levels table. I can see that little key next to the ID field. Indeed, when I double-click that link line, i got to get right on the link line, I see that it is a one-to-many relationship with the ID field in the activity levels table connected to the lifestyle field in the My Profile table. The so one activity level can have many records in My Profile. Now that doesn't quite make sense to me because My Profile as a table name sounds like this is a place to store personal information about me and me only. I don't know why you would have multiple records in the My Profile table unless you had multiple people. And if you had multiple people, the table should be named something like Participants versus My Profile, which indicates a single person. So I'm going to click Pencil on here. I'm going to right-click and delete this relationship for now. It's because it's not making sense to me. I'm also going to delete the Activity Levels table. If I really wanted to keep track of the activity level for just me, I could just move these fields over to the My Profile table. So that relationship didn't quite make sense to me. And for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to delete it for now and clean up the relationship screen. Now, foods to food log, this is saying one food can be logged many times. That makes total sense to me. And if I double click this link line, I see that it is a one-to-many relationship with the primary key field, food ID on the food side, and food eaten field on the food log table, the many table. I'm going to go ahead and enforce referential integrity on this and click OK. That will help me prevent the creation of orphan records. This is making some sense to me. One food can be logged many times. Now, if I wanted to log that food for me, I would want to hook it up with the My Profile table. But... I don't have a common field between the two. Now, can my profile log many foods? Yes. So it makes total sense to go into the food log table and design view and put uh, my ID or some field that would serve as the foreign key field, 
daily close to the My Profile table. So one profile can log many foods. And I'm going to enforce referential integrity and click Create. That part makes sense. Now I also have an exercise log table over here and a weight log table. And again, it makes sense that if I exercise many times and if I weigh myself in many times, I would have a one-to-many relationship with the My Profile table. Again, I don't have any common fields, so I'm going to have to go into the exercise log table and add a field for foreign key field. I'm going to call it My ID again, make it a number field so that it can connect successfully with the ID field in the My Profile table. One profile can have many exercise logs, and similarly with the weight log table. I'm going to have to add a foreign key field here. Save, close. I can weigh in multiple times if I'm being serious about my overall health. So here we have it. One person can log many foods, one person can have many exercise records, and one person can have many times that they weigh in. This relationship screen now makes sense to me. The other great thing about this design is that it would allow us to track these activities for multiple people. Now, of course, if I wanted to do that, I would change the My Profile table name to something that's more descriptive, such as participants. Let's go ahead and do that. Instead of My Profile, let's rename this to Participants and go back into our relationship screen, add participants in, and now my activity levels table also makes more sense because multiple participants could have multiple activity levels. And now the activity levels table makes more sense too because now multiple participants might have different activity levels. So now this relationship screen makes total sense to me. So at this point, I don't really know if this is the correct way to connect the tables because I am just working with this template that's provided by Access. I'm not working with a client to ask questions. This relationship screen now does make sense to me, whereas the template did not. But the moral to the story, the bottom line is that you have to have your tables in proper one-to-many relationships. The table names need to be clear. The field names need to be clear. And it must match your business model before you go ahead and create queries, forms, reports, and other objects. Because if you don't get this right, then all of the other objects will have to be reworked anyway. So it's money ahead and time ahead if you make sure that your relationships are solid and match the business before importing data and definitely before doing any more development work. Now, that's a perfect world. In my travels, oftentimes people are so excited about importing data and building other objects that they try to take shortcuts after the fact when their relationships are actually not as clear as they should be. You're much better off just making sure that everything is as clear as possible with table names, field names, and relationships, and then as necessary, just reworking your queries, forms, and reports to match the solid foundation. That will save you enormous time down the road, even though it's a difficult process to go from an incorrectly designed database to a correctly designed database. Even if it's a lot of work, it's always worth it. Thank you.